What's going on guys, JT is the latest Mustang in automotive news. We've got the Area 51 color on the Bronco Sport. We also have a full list of what options come on what model over at Bronco 6G. I'm not gonna explain all that, but it's definitely there. And then also we've got Ford is coming out with this podcast. It's an eight series podcast on the Bronco and the history, and it looks pretty cool. So let's check it all out. Oh, also what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here and build up a little Bronco Sport so you guys can check out that out. The configurator is up over there on Ford.com. All right, so first, this is over at Bronco 6G. Um, Tungsting, Tungstang has made, someone has made this full-on options list. What's available, what's an option. I'm not going to go over this because this is crazy intense with how many options and it's too much to try to go over in a video, obviously. But you can go check that out over at Bronco 6G. You got the different engines, transmissions, wheels and tire options, all the safety equipment, all this kind of stuff. So a lot of people have been wanting to see what this was, this Area 51 color. Let's just check this out on the home page. So this is Area 51, and this is, you know, it's hard to sometimes see colors when they're in the shop. If they're in like the Ford plant, you really want to see what it looks like under natural lighting, like outside. So this is Area 51. This is on a Bronco Sport, and I think it looks good. What do you guys think? See how the color's a little different inside versus outside? A little bit, not too bad. What do you guys think in the comment section? Let me know. This is Area 51 on a Bronco Sport. Do you like that or do you like the cactus gray? I prefer the cactus gray. But that actually looks really sharp right there. There's something weird about the Bronco Sport is it actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's not like the Bronco 2 that they made the back in the day. They had the full-size Bronco and they had the Bronco 2. This doesn't look like... This is not... I'm not mad at this at all. I'm not mad. I'm not bad. So the Bronco podcast is going to be interesting. Um... Basically, it sounds like they're going to go through and talk about, you know, the history of the Bronco and, and why, it's, why it's kind of coming back. And, you know, in my opinion, I've seen through the pandemic and everyone's supposed to be quarantining there and, and then their jobs, everyone's working from home. In my opinion, just my opinion, it seems like people are seeking a sense, a sense of adventure and escapism to get out of their home and get outdoors and do something and it's really cool that off-roading you know hiking mountain biking doing outdoorsy stuff it's a perfect time for people to actually do. i've seen so many people on the trails walking hiking mountain biking off-roading that you normally would never see so this is kind of like a perfect time for ford to release the bronco and they really capitalized on the Ford, you know, adventure, quote, adventure lifestyle that's become so trendy. And I'm not mad at it. It's, it's good that people are getting outside and kind of exploring how much fun it is to get out of the dang city and, you know, get outdoors and really use your truck what it's made for, use the trails what they're made for. And But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Do you think this kind of quarantine pandemic that's going on right now and everyone's been stuck at home, they're out of work or they're working from home and you think this outdoorsy adventure lifestyle kind of, uh, you know, marketing has influenced a lot of people to, you know, that is that why it's attractive to you? It's like this uh, fantasy of build up to go get this truck and go out in the woods and go on this huge adventure trip with you and your family or your friends or this particular trail that you want to try to climb or a, a tackle let me know what you think about that in the comment section all right so here is the bronco sport now here is all the different trims so base big bend outer banks badlands and then the first edition so the base starts at 26 6 let's just check out the base real quick and see what we can get you can only get you can't get all the colors in the base only one option of the wheels. So the base is very base. Let's just leave it at that. The base is very base. I'm not, it doesn't even look bad. I think it actually looks great. Uh, the What they did here with this quarter window, or this whatever you call that, how boxy this is. I mean, 
I mean, in, in my opinion, if you're going to look at this for $26,000 compared to like a like a Range Rover Sport or Discovery, uh, what do they even have, a dis Disco Sport now? They have so many different rain Land Rovers and Range Rovers now, I can't keep up with them, but $26,000 for an entry level that has four-wheel drive, I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and this has four-wheel drive. Now, it does come with the 1.5 liter EcoBoost with an eight-speed automatic, but the 1.5 still makes really good power. Okay, next there's the Big Bend, Let's just look at it real quick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but let's just look at it. I really wanna show you the first edition. So this is starting to like look better. You're starting to get like a, a different color. Uh, I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think they'll sell more of the Sport or the two-door or the four-door? I know four-doors sell a lot more, this being a four-door. I think they're gonna sell a lot of these too, to be honest. Although if you look over at the Bronco Sport forms, it's not quite, it's not half as active as, as the other. So what is added to this? Designed to getting outdoors easier, this Colony model comes equipped with attentive features like zipper pockets with mole strap system, rear fold lights, and a secure code, keyless entry keypad when your trip winds down, the rubberized cargo floor and easy to clean cloth interior makes a stress-free cleanup. So just adding a little bit more stuff. Plus, we're not gonna go into all this, is it make it too, too long of a video. Now here's the outer banks for 32, so you're talking about, so this is just $2,000 more. Big Ben's just a couple grand more. And it definitely does come with all these cool colors. Area 51, the, the cactus gray, which is, I think that looks great. So you can get these 17 inch wheels or these 18 inch wheels, which is both, that's cool. And then this is an all season for the 18. And then this is a, yeah, for the 17. It's less money. It's a 225, 65, 17. And then for the 18, it's a 225, 60, 18. And you can get splash, you can get the roof rails, uh, crossbars on this, and reverse sensing and the splash guards. You know, it just makes it look a little bit more cool for everyone that wants to look cool. And then, you know, cargo mat, mm, cargo management system, some little stuff. It's like a, you know, utilitarian. So you can still only get the. These all come with four-wheel drive. You can only get the 1.5 uh, EcoBoost Auto Start Stop 8-speed auto for this. Sorry, that was 28. This one's 32. All right, 2021 Bronco Sport Outer Banks. Let's just put them all in this cactus gray because that's what I like. So here's the 18-inch machine face aluminum FD black painted wheels. 225, 60, 18. You can do the splash guards, roof rail, and let's see so let's see what makes this one a little bit different so it looks great on the travel with refined exterior finishing complete with 18 inch machine face aluminum ebony black painted wheels a shadow black roof and bold black grill so you're going to get this black roof black grill and then these high gloss 18 inch wheels so it looks a lot better leather trimmed interior remote start black roof um, heated leather wrapped steering wheel, USB ports, auto start, stop, stuff like that. All right, so let's check out the Badlands, pinnacle of off-road performance equipped for rugged terrain and off-road excitement. So this is the first price point where you're actually going to, they're marketing as an off-road vehicle. So so if you look at the price points, 32.1 versus 32.6, the Outer Banks is more uh, refinement and then the Badland is more focused on off-roading. Badlands finds its place at the peak of Bronco sport capability so this is the top of the line for off-roading for the sport model. The pinnacle of off-road performance defends its title with a rugged exterior that includes metal bash plates. I'm assuming that's these or, or unless it means, means underneath. We'll check that out in a second. Off-road tires and the option between standard 17-inch carbonized gray painted low-gloss aluminum wheels or available 17-inch carbonized gray painted wheels with pockets, which I'll show you those. Those are cool. And when you're ready for action, advanced 4x4 trail control for off-road in seven standard GOAT modes, just like you have on the regular. Now, this one actually comes with a 2-liter EcoBoost, which I believe is, is rated about 245 horse or estimated to be, which that is pretty stout. And that is pretty stout. Uh, in the Escape, it was doing 0 to 60 and under 6. It was in the 5-second range. As it was like 5.7. So that's fast. You know, for what it is. 
off-road suspension, bash plates, train management, two liter EcoBoost, 235, 65, 17, front tow hooks, trail control for off-road. I mean, for most people, I'm going to be honest, for most people, this is going to go wherever you want to go, man. It's not the full-on Bronco that looks um, more aggressive, with, but honestly, uh, most of the places you're going to be able to go with this. Maybe you might need some ground clinch for certain things, but you've got four-wheel drive, and you've got off-road tires, and you've got a little bit of ground clinch. That's going to take you a lot of places. Let's check out the these, you know, these are just like steel wheels to me, but they're not. They're 17-inch carbonized gray painted low-gloss aluminum wheels, $300 extra. Then you're going to get off, all-terrain off-road tires, 235, 16, 17. So not bad. Throw the splash guards on there, give it a little look. And the roof rack for a little look. And then the old, uh, you know, make it look a little utilitarian uh, look there. You can go with all black, doesn't look bad. So all black looks cool with that. That I mean, that's a great looking car, man. I know it's just, uh, I know what it is, guys. I know it's not the full on off-roader, but for what it is, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a lot of those on the road. They, they, look, they don't look bad at all, in my opinion. Kodiak Brown is not, let's see, I think that's, that's classy looking. That's, that's not, uh, that's not tacky. The red even looks good. The cactus, let's check that out. You know, the cyber, sorry, cyber orange looks good. So you've got Oxford white and then you've also got this iconic silver. Iconic silver looks solid. What do you guys think? With the steel wheels, with the little mud guards, little defender, defender-ish looking anyone what do you think so and then you can get all the all the accessories that ford sells and i'm sure they'll they'll offer more as well bang and olfson two liter EcoBoost, start stop with the eight speed those are included in this one and you can do with trailer sway control let's see the badlands package what this comes with Eight-way power driver, six-way power passenger, four manual adjustment, head restraint, auto dimming rear, Bang & Olufsen, door handles, body color, dual zone electric, moonroof, remote start, charging for, charging pad, wireless charging pad. And this does come with the Copilot 360 Assist 2.0, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which is cool. If a car's in front of you and it's slowing down, you have the cruise control and it'll slow down with the car, keep a safe distance, and it'll accelerate back up lane centering which means basically it'll keep you in the lane without really touching the wheel and speed sign recognition which that's really interesting evasive steering assist so i haven't driven one of these uh but for 800 bucks if you were interested in that kind of technology it wouldn't be bad something real cool that they're offering is this sports suv tent so basically you pop open the tailgate and you've got a tent back there so you since you since this car is a little bit too small to camp in you can just pop that dude and make this one big thing which is pretty cool i like that they're doing this i would totally i would totally drive one of these and then here's another setup that they have here which a fold out work table this is something you can get as well so you can do your you can do your stuff up here. Now, this is going to be small. This is not big. I can tell how small this area is back here. But if you want to compact uh, something to overland in, it's no problem with a rooftop tent. I think it's cool. I like I like smaller cars sometimes just because of the efficiency. And this is not this is not bad looking. Now, I believe the towing capacity is 2,200 pounds, so it's not. You can't tow a boat, a big boat. You could definitely put a jet ski and a couple of dirt bikes. Dirt bikes, depending on how big you go, you know, 200 pounds to 350 each. And a little trailer, you could definitely tow some, definitely tow some dirt bikes. So, in my opinion, you know, this one looks like it's the one with the off-road tires, probably the Badlands. So, look, man, for the price, not bad. And they're showing the kind of the accessory, the mole strap system to help people. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but you can. It's just it's just you know utilitarian kind of accessories. 
It's fun, guys. What do you think? It's cheaper. It's fun. It's easier for people to get in at this price point. And to be honest, it's going to be where 99, it's going to be able to go where 99% of the people want to go. I mean, here's the deal. Here's the, this, I'm assuming this is the Badlands. I mean, that's about as most, as most people are going to be going in this little dude. If it can go on, if it can go on these trails, it's got a little bit of ground. As long as it has a little bit of ground clearance and it's got four wheel drive, the two liters got enough power. It can tow a little bit. I mean, that'll get you a lot of places, guys. It's got a lot of ground. You see how the back end is lifted a bit too? So it looks pretty solid in my opinion. I'm excited to see what people do with these. It doesn't look like you're going to be able to put a lot of wheel and tire under there based on how big the wheel wells are. But nonetheless, still pretty cool. Another cool thing, guys, is that the Bronco Sport has a glass rear hatch or a rear lift gate. So this, this opens up towards the top. Um, the two door and the four door has a swing swing gate. This has lift, uh, but it does have a glass opening. So like if you just want to throw grow, you don't want to lift up the tailgate. You just want to throw your, you just want to keep this dude open. You're camping. You just want to, you don't want to have this big thing up for whatever reason. This opens up, which is pretty cool. All right. And then this is the first edition for the Bronco sport. This is reservations are already full on this one. Actually. Introducing the new name of Off-Road Adventure, the first edition encompasses, encompasses, encompasses the best of what a Bronco Sport has to offer with the capability of Badlands and the refined style of an Outer Bank. So they're taking all of the, the style of the Outer Banks, putting them on the Off-Road of the Badlands, plus shadow black graphic decals and carbonized gray grill with black Bronco lettering. The first edition is fully loaded and one of a kind. And like anything unique, it was only available for a limited time. Reservations are full, but you might be able to catch one in the wild. So this has the carbon grill, painted roof, little decal here. This one actually looks really cool. It's got off-road, uh, all-terrain off-road tires. It would be cool if they only had select, if they had colors that were exclusive to this. That would make it even more exclusive. But let's check it out, and I prefer the Cactus over the Area 51. So it comes with everything. Leather. It's basically the luxury plus the off-road capability is what it is. So they're starting all the way from 26.6 all the way up to 38.5, which you're not going to be able to get one of those unless you already reserved it or people back out of the orders. But most of them, the top trims are, are right at $32,000, guys. So you're looking at 32 which is the fully loaded, basically fully loaded. Badlands are basically fully loaded. Outer Banks, whichever one you prefer is the luxury or the off-road. But 32, that's right around where the two-door and four-door base models start for this full size. So what would you guys rather have? Would you rather have a Badlands Sport, which is going to have, you know, it's going to be off-road worthy. It's going to have the two-liter turbo about 245 horse or the outer banks but would you rather have one of these guys loaded up or would you rather have a two-door four-door uh, base so let's just call it a two-door bronco base 2.3 with the manual transmission i know a lot of guys would rather have a base 2.3 manual transmission the hardcore enthusiasts would much rather have that than one of these guys. But for the general population, what do you guys think about that? Badlands Outer Banks Sport versus two-door Bronco full-size base model. Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, hit the links below. There's Bronco t-shirts and caps and mugs and all sorts of swag. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will keep you updated with the latest Ford Bronco and automotive news. I'll catch you in the next video.